Okay, here's the drill. This is my 18 inch long drill bit that I got from my Home Depot. And uh, this is what we're doing. Drilling down in through to uh, make a pilot for uh, pilot hole for my steel rod. Okay, these are some of the tools that I'm using uh, to accomplish this. Some of these probably could be substituted, uh, some not. Obviously, I got a drill, electric, and uh, battery operated. I have a hand grinder, could use a bench grinder. Uh, have a uh, craftsman saw, have my chainsaw, and uh, I guess the one thing I do want to say before I go on to the next thing is when I calculated the cost of this, it was dependent on obviously having the trees available for free that I could cut on my land. Also, I have all the equipment uh, that I need, or I was able to buy it really cheap. I like to drill bits and what have you. So, if you have all the equipment and you're confident with it and competent with it, then uh, this can be a fairly inexpensive shelter. If you are not, uh, don't even try it because you could get hurt. And an example of that is, well, I have my ladder here. And I have the ladder set up so I can do this. I came up because I have to create some center supports. One here in the center where I'll put a, about a two and a half foot upright to put my rafter on. And I'll have to put one over here and then I'll have to put one over here. That'll give me three upright rafters. And uh, I'll put my roof runners on. Now the only way to cut this notch is to stand on a ladder and uh, run your chainsaw. Now that's one way. If you are not uh, real good with a chainsaw or you don't have one uh, then don't try it because standing up here precariously positioned on a ladder trying to cut that is obviously dangerous so I'm putting out my little disclaimer I did it because well I did but um, if you're not pretty good with a chainsaw or comfortable doing it or scared of heights or whatever and don't try it another thing you could do for this uh, if you have an axe you could simply notch it out with an axe uh, or I suppose you don't have to do it at all. You know, obviously you can modify this in any way you want. This just happens to be the way that I'm doing it. So I've got this notch cut. And now what I'll do is I'll do another one over there. I'll do another one over here. Obviously I'm, I put this one halfway between the two sides. I'll measure that one out and this one out to, to match. And then do the same thing over on the other side. As you can see right there. I've done one in the middle. And I'll do one on either side of it. And then I'll be running, ready to run my rafters. And... Uh, I've actually cut my rafter material because of the fact that I'm going to have to be up here high on the ladder and uh, these rafters I'm going to run them a little longer to the front than uh, these. I've cut down some uh, nice tall straight smaller fir uh, because I'm going to have to be handling these at a pretty elevated height and I don't want to be up here trying to uh, manhandle that ash because as you can imagine it is incredibly heavy, and uh, that fur is a little more forgiving, a little lighter, uh, but I think it'll work fine as a rafter. And uh, you know, the rooster chiming in, but that's uh, where we're at at this point. I'll cut some more notches, and then uh, put up some uprights, and then we'll be ready to set some rafters. Alright, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to use some sheet metal that I had, and I just cut with some tin snips. And I'm going to uh, make some braces for these uprights. I don't want them to shift around and uh, I don't want to have to go buy any. So uh, I'm going to just use a good thick gauge metal that I had here. I'm going to pop a few holes in it. Use a good size spike to start your hole. That'll uh, make it a lot easier once you're up on the ladder. And uh, just drive your holes a couple up high, a couple down low. And then I'll show you uh, in just a second what that looks like on there and how I use it to, uh, to brace the thing. All right, we'll be back in a sec. All right, this is what I did with that uh, piece of metal I showed you. Wrapped it right down around the bottom there. Put it in with a couple of nails on the top. And then I did the same thing over on the back side. 
so that uh, this thing isn't going to go anywhere good and solid and uh, that will prevent it from twisting once I put my rafter across the two two pieces well here we are I put the rafters up before I did a video a couple things I did um, I decided I wanted this overhang that as you can see comes out about five feet beyond the uh, front of the frame when I decided I wanted that I had already cut and placed these side beams they should have been longer so I could have uh, culminated the roof but they weren't so I had to put one just to the inside and run it out and as you can see similar to the pictures um, of the one I used as a model and uh, I just ran them out I did use softwood because I could cut a few smaller pieces and they're a lot longer and a lot straighter and a lot lighter so I've used the pieces of metal to secure everything right there and uh, toenailed in them the tops in with nails just to make sure they stayed where they belong and now all I need is the roofing material well here we are we're getting ready for the next stage of uh, this project and uh, as you can see I've got the old uh, van loaded down with uh, pine slab wood went uh, last night over to uh, local mill and uh, Bruce set me up in good shape gave me this entire load of slabs and told me I could come back for another round if I needed it uh, for 20 bucks and you can't ask for cheaper roofing material than that so uh, from this roofing material from these slabs we're going to construct a roof so uh, it's a beautiful day as you can probably see the sun is beaming in and uh, it's October 12th beautiful Sunday morning about 50 degrees out perfect for a day's work and uh, hopefully by the end of the day we have a roof all right here we are up on the roof and this is kind of what I've done with uh, the slabs I've put uh, my base layer down with curve up and uh, left a little space in between put my next layer up on top with the curve down and uh, the purpose for that is to try to create as much of a flat surface for quick water dispersal as possible done that on both sides and you can see that there are uh, a few spots where water may be able to get in here and then down in it's not going to be 100 percent waterproof um, I may try to cap a couple of those and then what I'll do is uh, right here I'll lay a, a board this way and then a board this way going across the top which will provide a cap uh, for this as I said this technique is uh, probably not going to produce 100% waterproof uh, roof but that's okay for my application you know there's a million things you could do with this you could put plywood on it you could wrap tie power over the top of it when you're done I mean there's a hundred different ways you could roof this depending on what you want for an appearance and what you want for cost and if you have to have it 100% waterproof for your application you can but this is kind of what I'm doing and uh, I'm working from this side over here back as I go because I do not want to get up on this roof once it's finished it's finished uh, minus my cap probably that will be the only thing I'll have to get up here for at all I do not want to be crawling up on this thing and then trying to get off it on this kind of a slope and uh, breaking my neck so that's why I'm going to do it as I go and hopefully when I reach the front I'll be finished so I'll show you what it looks like when we're all done well here's the building all put together kind of took a couple of steps without filming to finish it I uh, put the boards up around the outside edges we put two tarps starting at the back coming around to the front by doing that it opened up a uh, five six foot area where we uh, just simply framed it up put a uh, hung a door and then a plain piece of plastic there to uh, let some light in and as you can see it's open to the top on the uh, overhang here we uh, use some rough sawn uh, pieces create braces 
did that on all four pieces because you can see that that's open so that as there's any smoke generated it will have a way to come right out so then we'll come over here you see I moved a couple things in already Put some of my buckets in here and uh, the stove that we'll work with and uh, some stuff to back it so it looks like inside framed up Not completely weatherproof, but uh, it'll work as a pretty decent little shelter for maple syrup production in the spring, we hope. That's that project finished off.